Do you want cheese or grapes? Mm. I'm gonna go with cheese. I don't like grapes too much. <laughs> Is that gonna be your snack for the day while you're working or coding or watching the stream? Thanks for letting me know about the camera, Dennis. All right, so yeah, you guys let me know. Are, are we using Tailwind for the styles for this or are we gonna write these styles ourselves? What do you wanna see? It's gonna be for this um, very poor to-do app. Tailwind? All right, Tailwind. So if it's your snack, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna go with cheese. Cheese is cheese is good. I love cheese. All right, cool. So let's let's install Tailwind. Uh, if I can remember how to install Tailwind, let's do npm install d Tailwind CSS. What is it? Auto prefixer and I think post CSS. Actually, let's just go to the docs and make sure Tailwind. Actually, is it already in Flowbyte? Yeah, it's in Flowbyte. Let's just do this. Okay, cool. So I was right. Let's just copy this over just in case. Can can. <laughs> you want to see my skills? How about Bootstrap? Do you even have you even tried? last week since we talked about it. No, I have not tried Bootstrap since we've talked about it. It was one of the first libraries I've ever used uh, when I first was like introduced to using libraries. Bootstrap was pretty cool. I haven't used it in a very long time. Do y'all wanna see me use Bootstrap or do you wanna see me use Tailwind? <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been busy. Tailwind, all right, we'll, we'll stick with Tailwind, but I Maybe for the next build uh, that you're in here for, we'll, we'll use some bootstrap. You can watch me fail miserably at uh, writing some bootstrap. All right, so I installed Tailwind. I'm setting up the config now. It's a shame you guys don't wanna see me write actual CSS. It's pretty fun. Okay, um, we're not gonna use Flowbyte. I don't really think we need to for something so small. Yeah, we're not gonna use Flowbyte. So we're just gonna we're just gonna use Tailwind. So let's go to our CSS. Let's just remove all of that. Put in the uh, Tailwind directives. Yeah, and that's it. All right. So instantly, this looks kind of better already. <laughs> What's the difference between what Tailwind and Bootstrap? CSS. Oh, um, so with Tailwind, a lot of the uh, styles are going to be like in the components themselves. Uh, it's, it's very class based. So if I wanted to style this form here, I could just write class name and I could do like a BG red 500. It's got all these class names kind of already um, created for us. And I'm actually not seeing it in here. Maybe form wasn't the best one to do this for. Class name equals. All right, I probably didn't set up the config correctly. Let me make sure. There we go. Kind of see it now. I don't think I saved one of my files, but um, yeah, you just write your own class names um, and these are Tailwind specific class names. And you do a lot of the styling with the class names in the in the markup. It's a lot easier and it's a lot quicker to create things this way. Um, if you do it custom and you write your own CSS, you have to actually really understand CSS and everything is, um, it's a lot modular. It, you'll have all your CSS in a CSS file versus everything in just one component file. Both approaches have their pros and cons though, for sure. All right. So we're gonna use Tailwind. So um, it looks like everything that I did yesterday is in this huge um, component here. It's not a template, it's it's more of like a library. It's, it's pretty much just like Bootstrap. Uh, it's just class-based styling um, and it's like all predefined styles. What's really cool with Tailwind and I don't know, Dennis, you could let me know if I'm wrong here, but I think Tailwind's the only one that has like if we were to do class name 
Um, we could give it a specific background color with bootstrap, but with Tailwind, you have like this IntelliSense. So you could do stuff like, like I did earlier, like BG red 500. And you could also do dark BG, um, we could do emerald 300. And you're gonna see it's green right here, but I think that's because we have it set to dark by default. Uh, but you can give things, you can give it a class of dark and it'll change the UI to dark. So you can set up your custom class names and styles for dark mode versus light mode, which is really, really cool. I think Tailwind's pretty much nailed it when it comes to this, this CSS class name stuff. But anyways, um, I'm gonna go over the app really, really quickly. It's pretty much just this one file and then we're gonna get started styling it. So our app is returning this set of code here. And I know you can't see anything here, but if we were to type in something like task one, task two, and then task three, it creates a new task every time we submit the form. And each task comes with two elements, our paragraph tag and then a delete button. And since we added Tailwind into here, this doesn't look like a delete button, we'll have to style it. But when you click the delete button, it deletes the respective um, to do task. So it's very, very basic, very small React app. Um, and it has no styling. So we're just gonna style this up today. And if we have some more time, the stream is really, really quick. We can, we can maybe start on something else or build something else out too. So um, real quick, we'll go over the code and then we'll start styling it up. So we're returning inside of our, um, our main component, we're returning two things, the form, which is our input. And the reason it's in an, it's in a form is so that when we hit enter, it'll actually do something. We could submit the form. Uh, but inside the form is really just our input here. And basically when we submit, we are adding whatever is inside of our input into state. And we are setting it as a task. And then every time we add something new, we're adding it to this array of tasks and we're looping over it inside of these inside of this ul we're looping over each item in our tasks array and we're making that list item that has the paragraph tag as well as the delete button and the delete button has an um, on click handler uh, handle delete task and we just filter through the task um, and delete the respective one so pretty simple and we're just going to style this up so in our main wrapper here what I think we can do, I might actually wrap this whole thing up into another wrapper. And that is so that I can center the actual to do thing in the, um, in the UI. I think it'll be pretty simple. So we can do div class name equals, and we can say, um, height screen, which is going to be height 100 view height. And let's do a display of grid and we'll place the items in the center. Shouldn't see anything yet because everything's super white. Um, let's actually change that real quick. We'll go to our input and we'll add a class name and we can do border. I uh, forget the class names for using a border. In Tailwind. I want to say it's just border. Let's see what it let's see what it gives me. Border spacing. Mm, let's just see what this does. Maybe that just gives me my border for me. Yeah, no, I'm still not seeing it. Where's Brohald when you need him? All right, our input is right here. Okay, so that's just adding the border color. So I think we just need to write something like border two. There we go, now we see it. Cool. Yeah, I'm still brand new to Tailwind, so some of these some of these class names are, uh, they're still pretty new to me. Oh, you're right there. So you've been watching me. You've been watching me fail and fumble with these class names and you just weren't helping. Thanks, bro hauled. All right. Uh, we'll do a rounded of medium. 
cool. And I don't like that outline. Maybe we can do slate 300. Does that do anything? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Let's make it darker though. Cool. And we're gonna add some padding. Now we have a super big input, but I think I'm zoomed in. Yeah, I'm zoomed in quite a bit. Just having dinner. What are you, what are you having? I'm hungry and I'm definitely eating after the stream. So give me some ideas. We'll do P Y dash three, which is padding top and bottom. And we'll do P X. We'll do like a five maybe. I think that looks. So this is our form. Cool. Um, now that we can see the input, let's just go back to editing. I mean, um, styling up the actual to do app itself. Baked potatoes and chicken. Oof, that sounds good. I shouldn't have asked. Now I'm hungry. Super, super hungry. Okay. First thing I want to do is let's go to the container that holds our entire form. Let's do BG red 500 just to kind of see what it, where it is. Okay, so let's do some padding in here. Do padding three, we could do rounded LG, which is gonna give us a nice border radius on it. Um, let's go ahead and remove the background color, but let's Let's change, let's just change it from red and we'll just do like a gray 200. There we go. This will look pretty bad just until I get everything up and going and kind of structured out and then we can work on the colors later. So maybe we should have a placeholder. Add a new task. There we go. And we can delete the dots. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Okay. So now we have our UL down here and our UL holds all of our list items. Um, I don't want to do too much to this. Maybe give it a slight padding, like a padding of two. And then for each of these list items, that's where we're going to, that's what we're going to update a little bit. So Let's see, we have our paragraph tag. Actually, for the list item itself, we'll do class name. And we want to do a display of flex. I think we just write flex for that. Um, and then space between, or what is the, is it flex space between? No, is it flex between? No. What is it, Rohald? Oh wait, I might be able to find it. Actually, it's just, it should be like justify between or something, right? Justify between, there it is, justify between. Cool, so now we have our delete button all the way over to the right. Let's uh, style that up a little bit. It's class name, uh, we'll do a border too. Um, let's color border. How did we do the border earlier? I already forgot. Oh, okay, so it's just border. And we can do red 500. Cool. Add um, a little bit of padding. That's a lot of padding. Let's also set the align uh, center. I think that's what it is. Or is it align items center? Place items center. There we go. Could be gap. Gap would work, except gap won't allow me to push the button all the way to the right. So if we took off the justify between and place item center, this is what it's initially looking like when we have the flex class. And if we just say gap two, it'll just give me a little bit of space between them. It won't push it all the way out to the right. Um, one other thing that we could do is just leave it like this to say flex and then the button we could do a margin left of auto and then that will also push it all the way to the the opposite side which is something we could technically do because we only have two items in our um in our list item actually i'll just leave it like that i think that looks pretty good 
It's a little easier to read too. Um, we do need to add back the um, place items center though. Cool. Um, one thing I do want to add a little bit of radius. We'll do rounded MD for the button. Let's take off some of this padding. I think we can do like um, left and right padding of three and we could do like a, maybe just a slight padding for the top. Ah yes, a second solution. There's so many different ways to do the exact same thing. It's really whatever you prefer most of the time. Can you do the chat like last time? Maybe put a button left or top right. What do you mean? Oh, ooh, I just realized the chat's in the way. Yeah, you're right. Let's, uh, I'll pop the chat up here. And what we can do is move this down just a little bit. There we go. And then I'll just move me a little bit over to, there we go. Yeah, thanks for the heads up on that. I'm not looking up at the uh, the actual stream, so if anything's ever in the way, just let me know. Actually, a much better idea. Let's put this back up here. Put this here, since this is pretty much our entire app, and it's not very big. And we'll put the chat here. And I'm gonna change my wallpaper. Put up something. A little easier to read the chat with. There we go, that works. And I'll just, I'll just be real small. I'll be real small. All right, does that work? Moving, moving. Yeah, I'm too focused. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Brian? Since you're just joining, we are taking the um, the to-do list app that we did yesterday and we're just gonna style it up since I didn't have a lot of time yesterday to style things. So we're styling it up today. Um, it shouldn't be too, too long. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be super long. So if the stream is super short, we might even build something new from the project generator. But as of right now, we're just building, we're just styling, and we're using some Tailwind. Okay. So we'll do a BG of red, let's do like a dark red for the button. Um, we could say text uh, red 500 to match the border, except that is not light, not, it's, not, it's not good enough. I think this is fine. Maybe the background's just too dark too. Cool, I think it looks okay. It's a lot easier to read now. Cool, we're gonna need some spacing here. So we could definitely use gap um, if, well, no, let's just do a margin. Yeah, let's just do margin bottom. Margin bottom, we can do something like that, I think looks good. Or maybe margin top. It's a lot of space at the bottom. I think that looks a little bit better. All right, so what happens if this is too long? What does this do? Okay, so it starts to break the app a little bit. Adios, Dennis. Thanks for coming to hang out for a little bit. Really cool to see you on here. <laughs> Have a good day, dude. So if we do set a max width on the form, let's do a width of full for our app and we'll do a max width of, let's do like 500 pixels. And for the 
false to with full. And then for the form, well, the input, I should say, we should also set it as a full width. I think we'll still have an issue, so we'll, we'll see. I think I know of a good way to fix it, though. Um, if we do class name with full on the input. Oh, wait, we already have a class name set up. What am I doing? With full. With full. There we go. Um, so we'll do test, test. Uh, I mean, this kind of works. Honestly, I think that's fine. I think that looks pretty okay. I was thinking it would still kind of push it out, but with the max width set, it actually works pretty well. We do need to center this again, though. Which means we need to take the... We need to take this and do a margin of auto, I believe. There we go. Now it's centered. And I want to do a f max... Uh, instead of with full, we'll do with, like, 85%. Now we'll have a little bit of padding around it. It'll be 85% of the width at all times, but it'll have a max of 500. Cool, cool. All right, so it's basically styled up. So now let's make it look pretty because it doesn't look pretty. Um, what colors should we use? Title, should we change the way this looks? Yeah, it's just using a black default color. Let's um, let's use slate and do like 700, 500. Title above the field, sure, let's do it. So right above the input, we can do a label HTML4, we'll do um, to do, we'll say new task. And we're gonna put an ID on this called new task. I think that's how that works. Um, and we're gonna say add a new to do, actually add a new task. And I think if we click it, nope. Red, red, red. <laughs> hey, Brian or Brohald. I haven't used labels and inputs. Oh, you know what? I spelled it wrong. That might be all I need to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's update the casing on these. Okay. Cool. Cool. So for the label, um, let's let's style it up. We'll do a class name. We'll do text small. I think that's how you do. Yeah. Let's do x xs for extra small. We'll go margin, bottom, one rim, text. Why am I doing rim? <laughs> uh, do I have to do block? Mm, I think that's fine. For the... For the label, uh, let's do text slate 500. Or maybe like something darker add a new task cool I think that looks okay let's remove the uh, block and the margin bottom one because it's not working actually let's figure out why it's not working margin bottom five yeah this doesn't work so if we go to the label so I do see it right here but it's not actually doing anything. Huh. Brohald, you've used Tailwind a good bit. Um, why? Why does my label not get any margin bottom that I want it to? Could do display block. See, now that makes it work, but I'm I'm assuming block isn't a uh, class name. I just assumed it was. Yeah, it is. 
Oh, maybe it just didn't work. Maybe I missed, I probably misspelled it. I'll go back and watch the stream. I probably misspelled it. Yeah, I set it with a display of block uh, when I first started, Brian, but it, it didn't do anything. So I figured maybe something else was going on, but I more than likely misspelled it because that's what I do best. I misspell everything. <laughs> okay. All right, let's put this right there so you guys can see the chat. Um, all right, what else? What else do y'all want to do to this 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 form? Should we make it like really pretty? Because it, it's still pretty basic. Test one, test two, or test three. So I'm gonna do test two. Delete, delete, delete. Everything looks like it works. All right, maybe we should like actually make it pretty, like pretty pretty. Is that all for the title? What else would you want to do for the title? You want to do something else? Because we can do it. If I do a BG red 500, is that for the whole page? Yeah, so let's do BG slate 800. So we have a cool little dark background. Make the text bold, okay? So we can do bold, actually no, font. Bold, I think that's it. Yeah, font bold. Let's change it to like 700 or 500. Looks okay. Walk the goldfish. Clean the grass. These are my these are my tasks. Delete, delete. I mean, this is pretty basic now. I think it works. Make the text bold for the um, to-do items too. That's a good idea. Where is our paragraph? Am I blind? Oh, it's right here, okay. The other two. Is that all for the title, center align, make the text bigger. Bigger text and center align. Okay, hold on. Sorry, I was just reading the chat. I was reading it backwards. Okay, so our label, we'll do text center. Um, I have it set to text small, but we can do like text LG. How's that? Listen to Soli and her demands. That is looking like a title now. Sure is. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. I think we're pretty much finished with this. There's not a whole lot more we can do. So how about I commit these changes and then we maybe try to build something new from the project generator. Number one, top priority task for sure. I agree. She says wait, so we can't finish yet. This is her show. We're literally following whatever she wants us to do today. Change the title name too. Okay, what's the title name gonna be? To do list. I like that. To do list. Add a new task. And add some margin top. You want to space it evenly between the uh, top, I guess, in the center of. From here, let's do um, let's do that just with the um, the uh, label. So the issue is you know we're having a padding three on the actual to do list, so we could do a margin bottom of three on the label. And I think that would look good. Or we should do more. We should do like five here. And then we could do five there too. 
Yeah, I think that looks good. Does that does that look good? I can't I can't say it looks good. You have to give me the okay. Okay. <laughs> Alright, before we finish out this to-do list app. Hold on, let's write finish to-do list app. Um, anything else you want to do to this? Or should we start on something new? I don't know what else to do to it. I mean, we could make like a full-fledged to-do list app instead of this basic one. But that's pretty time-consuming. He is awaiting your commands. <laughs> For real. <laughs> All right. Listen to Soli and her demands. Done. Finished to-do list app, done. Let's commit these changes and we'll work on a, we'll work on a new project from the random generator. Finished the to-do list styling as per so Lee's demands on stream. There we go. You're, you're in my commit message. Awesome, okay. So since we actually already submitted this project yesterday, it's already in here, submitted. Uh, so we can create, we can do a whole nother, whole nother project. Do y'all wanna see me build something from scratch based off of whatever the project generator generates for me? Brian says, heck yeah. All right, I think that's a good idea too. If so, Lee agrees, okay. All right, cool. We're gonna click it. Let's see what we're gonna get. A digital clock. I don't wanna build a digital clock. I don't even know how I would build a digital clock. Do y'all wanna see me build a digital clock or something different? I'll do it. If it's what you want, I'll do it. Next contestant, what do you mean? You want me to do it again? I'm gonna choose something different. Why would it, why would it suggest a digital clock? That's so random. Something different, all right. Well, I have to abandon this if we do that. Well, that project went down in flames. Time for plan B, C, or, all right, we're gonna abandon it. It's abandoned. All right, what else do we got? A movie searching app. Seems pretty involved. Abandon. <laughs> abandoned. It's a good word. It means I've abandoned my project. Can't do it. A movie searching app. Is that what you want to see? All right, we'll do it. Oh, hey, Brian or Brohald or anyone else. Uh, Watching the stream, do you guys know of any APIs, any movie APIs offhand? So I don't have to go and spend time searching. We'll go back and do the clock. Since this is my <laughs> project, I can go inside, um, watch, I have an idea. Let's, yeah, let's go to super base. IMDB. It does, mm, I mean, if we're gonna search for movies, I don't have a database full of movies offhand. We, we're definitely gonna have to use an API to search for movies. Um, we're gonna go back to the random generator because if um, if I actually try to click uh, click generate new, it won't let me because we already have one in progress. Um, but I can manually go and turn this back to in progress. So we can come back and do the, uh, so we can come back and do the digital clock at some other time. Where's my database? 
All right, so digital clock, we're gonna change this to in progress. There we go. And refresh, cool. I shouldn't be doing that though, but it's okay. All right, let's see, IMDB, IMDB uh, API, developer API. Create the latest demand to our GraphQL backend API available exclusively. Do y'all know if this is a free API? I'll be able to do this. It's not hacking, it's my own project. I'm allowed, it's okay. <laughs> This did though, however, show me a bug in my project. So it actually put digital clock back up at the top, which I think will have, will give us an issue when we go to either complete it or abandon it. Uh, this is a bug I needed to fix before hosting this anyway. It's just still running locally. Yeah, it's free or it was three years ago when I used it. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Nah, it should still be free. We'll see. All right, API. Getting access to the API. Do I need an AWS account? I don't I don't even know what my login for my AWS stuff is anymore. Is another one I've used before. Let's try this. OMDB API. API is a RESTful web service to obtain movie information. Okay. Okay. What is this? Hey, your message is being checked by mods and has not been yet, it's not yet been sent. I mean, I see it. Oh, maybe no one else has seen it. Maybe I have to like approve it. Oh, I do have to approve it. There you go. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I got I got it up. So, this this seems good. Let's uh let's use this. Let's uh let's 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 do this thing. Let's sign up and create a key. We can do, uh, let's do code with Dustin at gmail.com. Account type, free, thousand dollar, thousand daily limit. That should be good for me. Um, code with Dustin at gmail.com. First name, Dustin. Use? What do you mean use? Use what? Short, oh, short description of the website. I'm building a movie search app for no reason at all. Submit. Email delays. If your request key doesn't show up within an hour, please contact me directly. All right, let's see if I got my key. I have not gotten an email yet. Yeah, we might have to take a little break. <laughs> just wait for this key to come in and then we can start building. Well, actually, I'll probably just start setting everything up first. We don't need the key right away. And we could use dummy data. So what do we want this app to look like? It's a movie searching app, right? Let me see what, let me check out the docs and see what we, what kind of data we get access to. API documentation, overview, getting access. usage or data sets. <laughs> hey, if we ever do need an actual moderator for the chat, I'll definitely hit you up, Soli, if you wanna do it. Calling the API. No, I want to see. I want to see what sort of uh, data we get. One call, all data. Oh, that seems easy. You only need to make calls to a single URL. No more messing around with URL parameters. Okay, that seems super easy. Shout out to Rohal for the awesome API. This sounds cool. What's documentation do? Bulk data. API, learn how to subscribe and access the API and review common queries across our, maybe, 
Maybe that's what I need. Oh, it's under sample queries. So we can get the title and name, the box office and search. So title and name. It's an ID and we'll get back title. Genres. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. You know what we'll do? We'll make this super simple so that we can finish this all in one stream. And I'll basically create like a search form field. We'll search for movies and if they exist, they'll populate as we type in. How about that? Because I think that that should be pretty simple. I like that. Let me see if my API key came in yet. Still no API key. Let me check my spam. Nothing in spam, so we'll see, we'll wait. Like I said, we don't need the API key right off the bat. Did it not even go through? Email delays, if your request doesn't show up within an hour, please contact me directly. Who's me? <laughs> That's how we'll get new followers so we can make affiliates so that I can get to subscribe. Speaking of stream stuff, we should raid out after streams too. Yeah, I don't know anything about this kind of stuff, so you're gonna have to help me with that. <laughs> I'm down to learn it though. I don't know much about streaming. I just know that we wanted to start streaming, so I came running to Twitch. <laughs> yeah, me who? What do you mean? Email me directly, who's me? <laughs> me who um oh api by brian fritz uh, i guess i would email him oh yep i clicked on his name so i'm gonna email him directly if we don't get a uh if we don't get anything soon go away okay let's just get this project started by then we should have an api key so let's go to github Let's go to a new repository and I'm going to call this, what did the generator call it? All right, we'll close down this, close down this, keep that open, keep that open. We'll close the generator because we don't need it right now. What is this? Oh, this is the stream. Hi stream. Oh, I lied. We do need the generator open. What is the name of the project? Movie search app. Okay. So we'll do a movie search app. A basic movie search app. Should we build this with vanilla JavaScript or should we build this with React? You guys let me know and yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll go from there. A basic movie searching app with the OMB ONDB API. We'll add a readme, we'll create the repo. First time hearing about vanilla. Vanilla is just normal. It's just HTML, CSS, and just JavaScript. So whenever you hear vanilla JavaScript, that's what it means. It's just the basics. No libraries, no frameworks, all very basic. All right, so we're in my code directory, git clone. We'll paste down our new repo. Let's cd into movie search app. Let's clear all this out. Let's just code, open it up now. All right, so 
Sounds nice. Do you want me to do it in vanilla JavaScript? It would just be HTML, CSS, and just JavaScript. Or we could use React. We could use React Tailwind. We could use React Tailwind Flowbyte. Whatever you guys want. It'd probably be quicker with React. Uh, but it'd be pretty fun to build it kind of with just vanilla. I haven't done that in a very long time. I'm not using Angular, <laughs> not doing it. Not on this stream. Which would be better, better for a movie search app? Really anything. It might be a lot easier to read and understand with React, but if you wanna see the basics, we could use uh, just vanilla JavaScript. <laughs> I'm not using PHP either. I don't even know how to write PHP. I mean, I'm not opposed to learning, it would just be a very, very long stream and we probably wouldn't get anything actually done. I don't think you should start off with a movie searching app when you're learning something. React? All right, we'll use React. Let's go. All right, so npm create, actually, M yeah, npm create vite at latest. React. JavaScript. Um, let's use uh, Tailwind and Flowbyte for this since we're gonna use React. Poor Dustin being trolled. I know, I'm just getting picked on. Just always getting picked on. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Uh, npm install d tailwind css post css auto prefixer big old bullies basically so look i have an idea if we cannot get access to the api i'll generate some random data i'll see if i can't try to mimic what we would get back from the API and we'll just connect it up as if it was the actual API. And um, we can always connect to it later on. Big old bosses, bullies and bosses. <laughs> By the way, do you guys hear music in the background? I have some music playing. I don't get to hear it, unfortunately. It's kind of like flip flop from last stream. You guys can hear it, I can't hear it, but I do want to make sure it's actually playing. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now it's not awkwardly quiet. And we bought this actual track, so it's on a loop and we should not get copyrighted for this. <laughs> All right, cool, good to hear, good to hear. Okay, so we'll do mpx tailwind css init dash p. This is gonna set up our config file. We're just gonna copy this on into there. And we're gonna set up the Tailwind directives. I'm gonna do that in index.css. Now we're gonna install Flowbyte. So npm install Flowbyte and Flowbyte React. We're gonna update our plugins inside the config. And we're gonna add a new source for our exports to look at. Oh, I don't have enough space on this computer. There we go, a lot easier to see. So let's add this source. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, let's do npm run dev, see if everything's all working. I think it is. Cool, here we go. Let's go and delete the stuff we know we don't want. I'm gonna delete the assets folder for now. We are going to delete app.css. I'm gonna remove everything from app. And we're gonna title this movie app. And what else? What else, what else, what else? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right, so now we have our app up and running. 
and we can get started. So, I guess let's figure out what we want this to look like, right? Maybe you guys can help me come up with like a pretty basic UI. I'm thinking, obviously we can style this up. Maybe even next stream we can style this up pretty good. A lot better than we did the, uh, the to-do app. Like we can actually really style this up. But what about, maybe we keep it simple. Have like just a search field or, or let's see what Google has. Let's go to Google and say movie search app UI and see what comes up. See what kind of stuff we can get some inspo from. This is your line of work. Do you do a lot of designing stuff? Ooh, I like the way this looks. I guess it would really depend on what data we get back. I am definitely not a designer. <laughs> That's for sure. So I could use all the help with that. I like this. We could keep it simple and keep it kind of kind of like a mobile, like mobile view. We really need to get access to this API. Let's see, do I have anything yet in my email? I sure don't. Am I in the right email? Yep. Roll Hall giving us the worst. Nah, it's not the worst. Let's uh, let's fill this out again. <laughs> code with Dustin at gmail.com that's my email address um, building a movie search app for funsies submit all fields are required everything's filled in Do I need my full username my last name no Oh, now it worked. Why? That's so weird. I just got the email too. <laughs> Don't send me spam, please. <laughs> oh yeah, we got an API key. We have an API key. Sweet. Wow, that's a pretty basic API key. I'm gonna go ahead and off screen put this into an environment variable so no one can go and ruin it for me. All right, so you're not gonna be able to see this. Just give me a sec. Dot env dot local beat. I'm gonna use um, API equals in my API key. Hopefully you guys can't see. I don't think you guys can see anything. All right, close this out so y'all can't see it. Let's get back, cool. You heard the ding? <laughs> yeah, I finally got that email. I, I think something was wrong with the form. I resubmit, like I refreshed the page and then it automatically said a verification link was sent. <laughs> All right, now I have to activate the key to make sure it works. Your key is now activated. Okay, let's... Let's first see if this actually works. Um, let's do uh, npm install Axios. Oh wait, hold on. Let's do npm install Axios. Let's do import Axios from Axios. <laughs> yeah, they didn't think my user, my last name was right. <laughs> okay. So we now have our API key. Let's go ahead and make a request and see if it works. How do I do that? Query. Hey Broholt, are you still in here? How would I make a request? Like how do I how would I format a request? This seems very, unless I just do something like this. Let me, uh, yeah, let me, let me try that. Um, 
we'll say const data. Well, let's put this in a function. Async function get data equals. We want to let data equals await axios dot get. And I think I would put the I'd probably put the um, the actual URL. Where do I find that? Calling the API. Here we go. I just need the URL. That's all I need. Where's Bro Hald? Are you in here? Let me go ahead and move this over here. API key. Yeah, I seen this earlier. Where where did you find this at? Like where is it on their docs? I saw this earlier. I just don't know where to go back to get it. page <laughs> yeah all right cool this is this is what I need thanks bro hog So let's backtick this, backtick this. Uh, your API key goes here. Uh, I forget how to, I think it's like import.meta.local. Let me, let me check an old repo. Import.meta.env. That's what I need. Import.meta.env. Vite API is what I called it. So that should work. I get my editor right today. Okay, what? How do I format that response? Let me let me just see what I get back from this first. looks so annoying async function get data but data equals await 
axios dot get why is this messing up I'm all over the place. All right, let's um, console.log data, see if we get anything back. I feel like this is all messed up though. But let's see. Yep, I don't get anything back. What am I doing wrong, bro, Hald? I'm sure there's something wrong. Let's throw this. Oh, I'm not calling the function. That makes sense. And let's call API. It's console.log data. And then let's just call get data. But I do have to spell it right. Four oh one. Invalid API key. This is supposed to work and it's not. Why import.meta.env and then my API key name, which that is correct. Don't want to open it up on stream. Ah, okay. My file was in the wrong place. Maybe that's what messed it up. So let's go back and check. Nope. Still a 401 invalid API key. Let me log my API key to the console, make sure we're at least getting that. Yeah, that's working. All right, so, wow, you guys can all see my API key in the console too. I'm such an idiot. It's not like it's working anyway. All right, um, let's go to the docs. Does my key have to be inside of these uh, brackets? Because I, I removed them, assuming that they didn't. And I can add them back. <laughs> Still get a 401. Yeah, no, I don't know. Let me make sure I'm using the right API key. Nope, I'm using the wrong API key. And we're still getting an error. Maybe it's because I added the brackets. Yeah, I did. Let me remove the brackets. All right, if this doesn't work, then something's up with the API key. Oh, oh I didn't get an error. No error. 
So we're not console.logging data anymore though. There we go, now we have our data. That took way longer than I wanted to. Okay, so what do we get back? Incorrect INDB ID. So do we need an ID? Let's see. Yeah, we we'll probably have to add the ID after this, right? You'll want, to provide, you'll want to provide some parameters to request a specific movie or search term. Yes, you definitely get to know about APIs um, in the uh, front end web development tech degree. I think it's project eight, I could be wrong, but you're gonna connect to um, this API and you're gonna build an employee directory, which is really, really cool. So every time you refresh this page, you'll have like a new person here but you can ping this API and it's gonna return you a list of random users and each user has an image, um, a location, an age, an email, all kinds of stuff and you get to build like this employee directory from all these um, random users that are coming back from the API. It's a really cool project. It's one of my favorites in the uh, front end tech degree. This is all the data you get back. So yeah, you'll get back each person you get back will have the same uh, set of data. It'll have a gender, a name, which name has a title first and last, your location, which has a street, and then a number, and then a name, city, and all that fun, good stuff. This is a really, really cool uh, API. I love using it. I use it a lot, actually. What about React? Or that's the full stack course. Um, yeah, there's no React in the front end tech degree. It's all in the uh, full stack JavaScript course uh, tech degree but you'll use an API with that too. Hey Rohald, I've never used something like this before. What, um, if I wanted to use this search, how would I change my string? I mean my query or my API, I should say. Let's change this to search API. And then we'll do search. API, let me respell it. After the and, you'll add s equals search term here. Okay, I kind of figured, but I didn't want to have to go and troubleshoot everything all over again, because today's been a lot of troubleshooting. Okay, so in the search term, movie title search for, so let's, uh, we'll write s equals and we'll interpolate this too and we'll say search query and for now let's hard code search query say const search query equals um it's a good movie you can add multiple parameters by separating separated by a and if you want okay okay cool cool search query Lord of the Rings. That's action. That's super action-y. All right, so now we're basically awaiting um, the search API, which is this. Um, and at the very end, we have a search parameter and it's calling search query, which we're gonna come up with this dynamically based off of what we search. But for right now, it's just gonna say Lord of the Rings. So let's see what we get back in the console. Hopefully we get something back in the console. Yeah, we do. Okay, cool. So the data that we get back, uh, search. Wow, look at all these Lord of the Rings movies. Cool, I like that. Top results, total results, 77. I'm guessing it's only showing us the first 10. That's cool. So what information do we get in each of these? Cool, we get a poster, we get a title type. Okay, this is gonna be everything that we need. Awesome. Now let's go look at our UI a little bit, figure out what we wanna do. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, let's just let's just design it, and we'll do we'll do like a mobile we'll do like a mobile UI. Let's set it up with a dark background. We'll have a search up here. That's too dark. Let's change this up a little bit so we can see. Yeah. 
Your username comes from Lord of the Rings. Is it the GWAIHIR89? Yeah, mobile. Something from uplabs.com. What is uplabs.com? Design files. I like this. Can I type in movie search? Oh, cool. Oh, I like this website. This is cool. You should go post this on Treehouse Links. If you don't know what that is, it's you just share cool links. <laughs> uh, you can go to Treehouse, this is teamtreehouse.com. Go to the community tab up here. Go to links and then submit a new link. And you should totally put this in here because this is really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's see if we can't find something from here. This is cool, I like this. What data do we get back? So we get a poster, title, type, and year. Let's, let's screenshot this, okay. And we also get um, multiple 10 minimum, I mean 10 max um, results, okay? So what we should do when we search for an item, we should have every item appear, right? Yeah, we should have every item appear. And then when you click on an item, we should be able to get the poster title type. Well, the poster is gonna be right here, right? And then we should probably each, each of them should probably have their titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have our title here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Returns games too. There's only three movies. Yeah, let's see. Oh, okay, so type, yeah, type is game. Okay, cool, so if we have a type of game, we should show something a little bit different. Maybe we can have like an icon in the top right that shows if it's a movie or a game, right? Do you know if there's any other types that are available? Search movies, I might get better results. Oh no, where'd it go? Up labs, there we go. Movies. Oh, you're right, we do. There's probably a parameter to filter types too if you rather stick to movies. I, I mean, I'm cool with it showing that. We'll, uh, we'll take a look. I think movies and games are probably good for a good start. This looks awesome. I like this UI a lot. Let's use some stuff from it, if we can. Let's delete all this. Okay. Maybe we can have like some initial um, set this down to zero yeah I like this UI it's pretty it's pretty fun maybe we can have a way to like get some initial ones set up in here so that this looks like it's full already and then we'll obviously search and then we'll have up our we'll have our search results show up and then maybe when we click it um, we can have some stuff like this too I just I don't think we get all that much data back that's the only downside all right, so we get, yeah, we just get a title. Oh, okay, so now we have a type here too that says series. So for sure we got movie, or or maybe it never was. Yeah, we have movie, 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 series, movie, game, 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 and game. Yeah, so 
at least for now, at least three types. And maybe we can even add like a search, uh, a filter. So if you want to filter just by movies, it'll show just movies. Cool. Let's not overcomplicate it. We'll, we'll add just those basic features. So this can be just slightly lighter than this, I think. Movie, series, episodes are the possible values types. Yeah, but there's games too, right? And game. Can't forget game. These colors are kind of redundant. We'll just use the Tailwind colors, but I just want to get a better idea. So we'll have our search field up here. Let's move this down. We'll have our little title. It says, let's have some fun. What do you want to watch? I don't think that makes sense for what we're doing, but it's fine. Cause we could also return um, games. The docs don't mention games. Yeah, that's weird. Definitely has a game type. Oh well, not the end of the world. I'll probably polish this up a lot better after stream too. I just wanna kinda of get something going. I've already wasted lots of time. Um, Maybe this should be a little lighter and then this should be a little darker. Again, we're gonna use tailwind colors for this, so it's not really gonna matter all that much. Cool. Let me put this down a little bit and we'll make this white. And we're gonna get back from our results TV shows, series, movies, prime videos, and games. Okay, cool. I, I'll look at the ones that I know for sure. So if those are like the minimum, or at least those are, we'll write some conditionals to render a specific icon based off of the type. That way users will know. Or maybe we could have like a huge color thingy on it. Um, so let's say our first one was this, right? Throw this in here like that, round it up. Um, we get a title, right? Yeah, we get a title. So the image is gonna be the poster. The title would be the Lord of the Rings, even though that's Jason Momoa. <laughs> um, we're gonna have a type, which I can put up here, right? And it'll be a specific color based off of its its type, right? So maybe movie could be blue. And we'll definitely wanna add the same background color for the border. It kinda looks like that. I think it looks pretty cool. And we'll have like a little icon in here that says like a movie icon. It looks pretty cool. And then like, obviously, what else do we get? We, we get a year. We'll say 2011 or something, or this is 2001. Um, and then we just get the actual like title. Oh, you know what? With this ID, I bet we get way more information about the actual movie. So yeah, I think that would be too much for this one, uh, this one build, but maybe next, um, I do not have Iconify on Figma. I always go to like font awesome and drag them in here. Is there a way that I could have icons in Figma? Cause that would be amazing if so. Please share your wisdom on that if you if you have any. Um, but yeah, so in the future, I think maybe we can even do this next stream. We'll click we'll click on each one of these uh, things that are rendered back, and that'll and we'll ping the API with the ID, and we'll get more information. So for now, we'll just build a an app that just searches for movies, and that's it. So yeah, I think that'd be pretty fun. This will be a really cool, very easy build. I think we should be able to get this done within an hour or so. So. Cool, 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 cool. This will obviously be bold. This will probably be a little bit smaller.
Yeah, for sure. Also, DM me in Discord or Slack or something if you um, want to wait till later to find out how to do it. Cause I don't want to. I don't want to do it on stream. But yeah, I definitely want to know how to get Figma icons in here. It'd be so much easier than me opening up um, Font Awesome and then dragging an icon, having to search and drag. So I could do free. Actually, no, take that off, go to movie. Yeah, this is my current workflow for icons. I don't, I don't like it. Should we do white? Yeah, we'll do white and we'll, we'll update these background colors to be better contrast or something. Maybe we shouldn't do blue. There's a lot of blue right now. We'll change these up later. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. All right, so I think we have the basics of what we're gonna do. So let's just start doing it. Cool. I also really like that this is just a mobile only um, so that I can leave the editor to the left and put this to the right. Um, again, guys, please let me know if it's hard to read the chat, if you guys need me to move things down or, or whatever. There's really no good place to put the chat ever. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Also, I don't even need to be here. I could be anywhere. I'm going to I'm going to be right here. Where am I? Where's my uh There we go. Let's also turn me around. Now it looks like I'm looking at my code. Cool. <laughs> all right, we're finished with all this annoying stuff. Let's actually get to building. All right, so we have the app. It's returning our data. Let's close off the stream, close off Tailwind, my movie app. I've got three versions of it open for whatever reason. And then this there, okay. Cool. All right, so let's let's get this started. Let's get this started. I'm gonna make this as simple as we can. So all we have so far is just we're calling our data and we're returning it. So we don't need to worry about any of that right now. Let's comment that all out. And let's work on just the basics of our application, the UI. And I want to be able to look at this. Whenever I want. There we go. All right, let's start off. All right, cool. We'll do a class name and this will be the main background color. Let's do BG, we can do Indigo 700. We'll do a height screen. Cool. And let's just, yeah, we can center it too. Let's center it. But also, so that we can keep seeing the chat, I'll, um, I'll do kind of like what we did earlier. Uh, we'll do grid, place items, center. Awesome. And now this is gonna be our actual movie app. So let's create a component, we'll call it movie app. And we'll import it. And then we'll go ahead and create it. So 
new folder, we'll call it components, new file, movie app.jsx, call it movie app, come over here and refresh. And now we should see it. Cool. All right. And we want a bottom section down here and we want a top section. So let's see, we'll just do two components. We'll have a form component, which will be the top part. And then we'll have a preview component. I think those sound pretty good. So inside of the movie app, we'll return an empty, uh, empty fragment and we can do um, search form and then we can do movie or media preview. Uh, we'll just call it preview, it's not a big deal. Preview. And we're gonna need to import them and create them. So do search form from search form and it will import preview from preview. We'll create search form.jsx and then we'll create preview.jsx. All right. And I didn't do something. It's not liking, it's not liking whatever's going on. All right, so let's see. We got preview. We have our search form. What is it saying? Search form doesn't exist. Did I not save it? Oh, I misspelled it. Search forms. Let's change that to form. We're gonna have to change that here also. And everything should work now. Cool, so we have our search form and our preview. For the search form, we're gonna have um, our label and our input. Kinda like we did for the to-do app, basically. So let's close off all these things so I don't get overwhelmed like I did last stream. And let's go to our search form component. And we wanna return a form. And we want a label. And we'll say search. And for the label, we'll say, let's have some fun. What do you want to see? I think C will be better. Let's change this to to that. All right, let's have some fun. What do you want to see? Great. Let's um, class name. You can do text white and we'll do font or text how do i up the font i think it's what text lg or font lg okay there we go xl i think xl looks pretty good and then underneath it we're gonna have our input type of text id of search and I don't like the way this is spaced out. So um, maybe we could just do a display block on the input. Yeah, we'll also set it up with a width uh, full. We'll do rounded. Hey, Brohald, if you're still here, how do you do the perfect pill shaped roundedness? Is it rounded full? Yeah, there we go. Cool. And we'll do a little bit of padding, padding three. Except that's not doing anything at all. What happens if I take padding three off? Nothing. Input. P5, Lord of the Rings. I don't like the way that looks. What if we did um, text LG in here? I 
and we'll do px5. I think that should be good. Cool, 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 cool. Let's also do a margin top. And we'll make the text a little bit bigger. We'll do 2XL. Cool. Um, and for the form, let's give, um, actually, no, not the form. Well, yeah, let's do a class name of with full. And then its container, which is app, we're going to do a width of 80% margin auto max width of 500 pixels. Did I do that right? Yeah, but no. That needs to be for the movie app itself. So let's take this out. And we're gonna put that in here. With 80% has a tailwind class two with four out of five. Wow, cool. Yeah, I, I know that there's a lot of built in and I haven't wanted to go through and figure it out. So I just been like manually doing it, but that's cool. Cause I use 80% a lot. So four to five are like that, that works. Sweet, okay. Set the max width to maybe 400 instead. Yeah, it looks cool. Uh, should we center this uh, title? You guys think we should center it or leave it as is? Maybe make it bigger for one. Let's do like 4x. Or maybe 3x and then margin top like five. Space it out a little bit more. All right. Cool. And now we have our preview at the bottom. Half, three quarter, uh, half, three quarters, four to five, 11, 12, or some variants. Cool. I'll play around with those. I need to get better at actually using them and not just trying to do CSS stuff inside Tailwind. <laughs> okay. So I think that really is all we kind of need to do for this top section. Um, I do want to change one tiny thing though. I don't, uh, well, you know what? It, it's okay that this is centered. This looks okay centered. We'll come back to it if we need to. Let's go to our preview now. So preview, I might have to adjust some stuff, but I want the preview width to be the full width of the, yeah. Okay, so class name equals with full BG, we'll do um, zinc 800. Yeah, it's it's not gonna be the full width. Dang, okay, that's okay. That's okay. We're gonna adjust this. So if I remove this, we still have an issue. And that's because of why is this not full? Oh, because that's the max content. Okay. I want the preview. All right, with full on the actual app itself. And then the search form, we're gonna give that to the form. There we go. And then we're gonna also need to, does that work? Yeah. And then we're gonna also need to do that to the content inside of our preview. So let's do a margin top of like 500, uh, five, maybe even a little bit more do 10 okay and then I'm gonna say which roll hold I think there's like a container out there right 
I don't know how that works, the container class. Let's see. Okay, so it automatically has like widths. Yeah, I don't wanna use that. I just wanna use something myself. Okay, cool. So this now shows, it's kind of hard to see. Let's change the text color. Uh, we can do a padding of like five, make it super padding. Um, all right, roll hold. I'm gonna need help again with the rounded corners. I just wanna do the top and left. I always forget how that works. They don't. Oh, that's it. Just TL. Rounded TL LG and then rounded TR LG. No, it didn't work. And then the size of it. Does LG not work? Do I have to put like my actual? Oh, I'm doing it on the wrong, the wrong. Um element that's why there we go lg we're gonna do like 3xl cool and then i want the height to be full height except that's not gonna work is it We're gonna need to go back to movie app. I'm gonna say H screen, and then that should work. Except now I get all this space. What's with all the space? You can do rounded T. XL2 on both top corners at once. Oh, that's neat. Okay, so there's a little bit of a shorthand. Ah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Cool. All right, so why whenever I do width, I mean height, full, I have all this extra space. Is it because of the container underneath it? Hmm. Well, this is annoying. I hate having to figure these kinds of these kinds of things out. Search form needs a bit of padding, though. Padding Y of like ten. There we go. And then this margin top. No, that's good. So is it the preview that's got margin? I don't know. Let's go to the dev tools. Why are my dev tools so huge? There we go. Okay, wait. Something had some margin top here. Oh yeah, I do have margin top 10. Yep, that. That's what I want going. <laughs> I wonder if I do a display of flex, if that would actually fix it. Flex, and we'll do flex call. And that works, because now I think if I add more content to this. Oh boy, I cannot type. Yeah, it'll just work. But I think if we put too much content, it'll break. Yeah, it'll still do this. Um, what if we handle the overflow? We can do overflow, y, auto, 
and we'll set the height. Well, the height is set to full, so I don't know. I think it'll just. Well, if we set movie app to overflow none or hidden, would this still wouldn't scroll. We'd have to put a container inside of this. with a width of full and a tons of those. We can do BG red 500, see if this what this is looking like. All right, is it is it this overflow that's messing me up here? Or is it actually the overflow hidden on this? Yeah, I'm not liking, I'm not liking that. I definitely want this section here to start scrolling with extra content because I don't want to lose sight of this here. On the preview container. And hidden on the app container. Overflow. Hold on, let's do Y. Uh, scroll there we go that definitely works yeah let's set this to auto though so that it only shows when we need it to awesome cool that works yeah overflow really confuses me um also, I'm gonna turn on Copilot, see if it can't help me remember how to do some styles for the uh, scroll bars. Cause I don't remember how to do that. Um, enable completions. Yes, let's go into the CSS file. Um, I think it's scroll. Yeah, it's WebKit scroll bar. Does it offer me anything? It does not. Oh, it's not turned on. I thought I turned it on. Oh no, it is turned on. Oh, I gotta enable it for CSS. Okay, so WebKit scroll bar. I do know I want to use the track. We'll set that there. How's that look? Looks horrible. Let's change this up to some different colors. Match our UI a little bit. Also inside of this preview, I want to add a little bit of padding so that the scroll bar, oh, no, I'm gonna have to, I would have to do another container to do that, which is fine because this, shouldn't be here. This is a great plugin for custom styled scroll bars with Tailwind. Oh, bet. Oh, that's neat. <laughs> I like that second one, it's very minimal. This HTML class name, where does this go? Do I put this like in my main like? So it says uh, the scroll bar color utilities are inherited. So if you want to use the same colors on every custom scroll bar, you can define them. You can define them at a high-level element like the HTML tag, and then simply add the scroll bar and scroll bar thin to each one. So that's only if I want to use it for like the whole thing, huh? Okay. Mm. 
nah, this is the only thing that's gonna be scrolling for now. So I would put this on the parent, right? And then I would put, I don't know, that still confuses me. Like, would I put everything on the same class? I don't know, this confuses me a little bit. Um, I need to do some other stuff first. Let me, I want the, I'm very, I'm very OCD when it comes to this stuff. So I, I don't want the scroll bar all the way to the right like it is. I want it inside of here. So I need to put this inside of another container. Um, I just gotta figure out how to do it. Normally this is like a something you set up before, not after the fact. It might be as simple as just adding a uh, thing like this, like another container around it with some padding. Except of course that breaks everything. I don't know, sometimes it's just easier writing vanilla JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Or it's not even that, it's the fact that I'm using Tailwind for all of this. All right, so we want the width of full, the background color, definitely want all this on this container. The rounded, yes. The overflow Y, oh, no, I think this is what can stay on that container there. No, that doesn't do anything. All I probably did was just mess everything up, to be honest. Yeah, this is all messed up now. You know what, I'm not gonna worry about the scroll bar. It's so, it's such a small thing. Or what if I did it on this? No, 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 no. We're not worried about it. It scrolls. Can I have it hidden though? <laughs> Can I at least not have to look at it? I'm so pixel perfect when it comes to some of these things. I don't like my scroll bar, but it's fine. Wait, now it's not scrolling at all. Overflow auto py. everything hold on okay why is it still showing the stupid scroll bar thingy oh because it's in here there we go we'll come back later well, maybe I can just set this to like transparent. And it still messes everything up. God, I hate dealing with scroll bars. We're just deleting it. <laughs> scroll bars suck. And then they don't even look the same across browsers. All right, we're getting so off topic here. All right, so this is how the Apple look. We'll search something and then our thing down here should populate, right? Right. So let's let's do that. Our search form is here. Let's go grab all of our our fun stuff from earlier. Inside of the search form, let's paste it in. 
All right, so we are importing Axios. Our search query is um, hard coded, but we'll fix that. Here is our um, API, our search API. And then here's our function. And then here is us calling the function. So if I hit save, we should probably get some stuff in the console still. Awesome, we do. Let's do data.data. Let's see what we get back. Okay, so data.data.search gives us all of, gives us our array of um, stuff. So let's do data.data.search. And then we should just get back our 10 at a minimum items. I mean, at max items. Sweet. All right, so now let's, let's work on actually searching for what we want to search for. Yeah, let's do that. So on our input, let's do an on change. And on change, we want to take in, oh, I still got copilot completions on. No cheating, no cheating here. Delete, turn that off. Okay, awesome. All right, and we want to, on change, we want to update uh, the current value, right? And we'll want to set that as the value for the input since we're updating it. All right, so let's do current value and we'll have to set this up in state. So we can say const um, current value and then set current value equals use state initially set to an empty string. We're gonna have to import use state. So we'll do import use state from React. And in here, we'll just say uh, set, what do we call it? Set current value to e.target.target value and what did I do wrong now I'll try to close it out on change e target e dot value oh it's too many of those okay testing okay cool so that works um, and then we we submit the form by pressing enter we want to change that to our search query, right? So let's put search query, we'll say const search query, and then set search query equals use state, and it'll initially be set to an empty string as well. So on the form we can do um, on submit, uh, we'll take in the event, and then let's create a function, we'll, we'll we can do our get data function, right? With e.target.value as the parameter. So this could be our query. Um, and we want to, let's say search. No, let's, let's not overcomplicate it. Um, all right, so let's not use this. So when we on submit, we want to handle API request okay so let's go and create that function function handle API request I'm we'll taking the event and we'll say set search query and we'll set it to e dot target dot value or actually no we're already storing that value so we can just say current value it's not liking something move it inside the component duh there we go um, we do need to take our event and prevent the default behavior of the form because when you submit a form, it'll reload the page. We don't want that. So that's why we're grabbing in the event. Search, set search query. We're setting it to the current value. Great. 
So then we need to make our API call with the search query. So we can say get data. Um, and let's just do query. Well, we can do search query and inside of the actual thing, the actual function call query will equal what we type in. So let's see here. Let's remove it from our actual API. Yeah, let's remove it from our API and we'll add it here. So axios.git search API. Uh, let's interpolate the value. Do search API. And then we'll do query. That should work. Um, and then we'll console.log data and we can remove the get data call here because we're actually making it when we submit the form. Hopefully this works, let's see. Let's open up the console. We'll type in something and hopefully we'll get something back. If not, we'll figure out what we did wrong and go from there. Um, the twilight zone. Hit enter and it actually submitted our form. So something's not right here. E is declared but never used. Um, oh yeah, we have to pass it. Okay, now let's try the twilight zone and we get back undefined so let's see what we're getting back so console.log is here well let's let's do the lord of the rings yeah still undefined so let's figure out what's going on first let's actually console well let's say um We'll say let to search equals, and then we will paste this here and we'll do to search or we'll call it query to search. And we'll do this so that I can kind of see what we're, we'll log uh, query to search. So let's console log query to search Let's see what we get back in the browser so the Lord of the Rings and it shows my API key again great uh, but it's not taken in our query for some reason so we've got to figure out why so that's that's the issue so when we submit the form we're handling the API request we're preventing the default we're setting the search query to the current value all right, I don't see why that's not working. So, oh, I'm using two different, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, get data. So, okay, we're setting the search query to our current value. And then we're calling the get data function. The get data function, search query, the query, the query is getting passed. And we're setting the search query to that. So let's just see if that's even working. Console.log search query. State probably hasn't been updated yet by the time you're using the search query. I have had that happen a few times and I don't know, how do I get around it? The Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah, so how do I get around it? If I'm actually, if, if everything's still happening in chronological order, why is state not updating when it's supposed to? Does she really? You should link it so I can take a look at it. Mm. 
No way to explain it. Great. One piece of state instead of two. Okay. Let's do that. So let's remove the search query. And every time we use it, So when we ping the API, we'll hit our search API, and then we're gonna tack on the current value, which means we don't need that anymore. We don't need that parameter whatsoever. So let's run through this and let's see. So as we type, we are setting the current value to the, uh, if, let's make sure that still works, yeah. So as we're typing, we're setting current value to what's in the input field. And then when we submit, we're calling handle API request. On handle API request, we're preventing the thing from running. I mean, the um, form from submitting. And then we're calling get data. Get data awaits the axios.get request to the search API with our current value. Um, and then it logs it to the console. So this should work. Let's see. Lord of the Rings. Current value is not defined. Rohal just said get data doesn't have access to create value. Okay, let's see. Where's get data? Doesn't have access to current value. There we go. That should fix that. All right, the Lord of the Rings. Sweet, now we get back our data. Awesome. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, except not really, it was kind of difficult. But we're gonna now start actually loading in the content. Thanks, bro -hold. Awesome sauce. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. All right. So what are we getting back? Well, data.data.search is returning our array. Let's put that into some state. Const current selection set current selection equals use state. We'll set it up as an empty array. Great. And what we'll do is we'll say set current selection and we'll just pass in um, what's already in. Well, no, we want to update this each time. Yeah, so should be simple, right? We'll just do um, data.data.search, right? So I'll type in the Lord of the Rings and I'll go over to the components, check our state and we get an array in state with all of our stuff in it. That's exactly what I wanted. It's exactly what I wanted. Cool. So now we should pass the current selection to, well, we can remove this. Um, we should pass current selection. Ooh, that's something I haven't done before. I actually have a bit of state that I want to pass, but I'm not passing it to a child component. How would I do that? Or do I need to use context? Which I'm, fi I'm fine using context, but you yelled at me for you overusing it last time, Brohald. Yeah. You let me know. I'll be right back. Take a quick five minute break.
No, he was he was yelling. No, I'm kidding. He wasn't yelling. I'm probably over exaggerating. Okay. Let me read what she said. So you can move that piece of state into the app component and pass it down as props to the search form. Don't know what the other one is called. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I could do that instead of just using context, huh? And then I could pass it and update it from here. <laughs> God, y'all are such bullies. Y'all are some bullies, man. All right. Let's take this state out of here. Let's pop it into, uh, let's do movies. Let's just put it into the movies. I'm gonna import state. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and then into the search form, I want to say, well, I'm, I'm gonna use both, I guess. So current selection equals Current selection, and I'll set current collection equals set current collection. Selection, not collection. Search form only needs set data, right? Search form pings the API and gets the data, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't need to pass in. You're right. I don't need to pass in the uh, current selection. We're gonna need that inside of preview. I would have figured it out. Let me spread my wings and fly. Roll. <laughs> it's only considered yelling if it wasn't my idea first. That way I can make you look bad. <laughs> All right. Why is this looking like that? I spelled it wrong. Of course I did. Okay, so now let's go back to the search form and update some things. So we're gonna need to use props.setCurrent uh, selection. So I'll need to pass down props. And I think that honestly should be it for, um, for that, right? Now preview should have access to um, the current selection that we're getting back, right? Of course. So in here, let's map through it. Say props dot current selection dot map. Um, what do I want to call it? Media, and then we'll say index, and we'll return. Can't forget the return keyword because it's my favorite thing to forget these days. Um, we'll return a card, right? And we're gonna create these cards here in a little bit. Ho, ho, ho. Fun stuff. Let's go over here and create a card component. Obviously, it's going to take some props, so we'll pop that in now. Um, and here we'll just say props.title. All right, we'll have an image for the poster. We'll say props.poster. And for now, let's just leave this as is. Um, and let's go and make sure this all actually works. So we'll say uh, poster equals, um, ooh, it'd be props dot, oh no, 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 we're already looping over. So we'll say media dot poster, I think is what we get, right? Ah, it's not in state anymore. This might break some stuff. The Lord of the Rings. No, didn't break nothing. Sweet. Actually, movie app holds our array now. Okay, so we're gonna get back a poster. Okay, poster, and that's gonna be the, so poster type, year and title. Okay, so poster, 
media.poster and we'll have type equals media.type um, and what was the other one? Year. Okay, so we'll do um, media.year. What am I doing? Year equals media.year. And we'll do a key with the index in it so it stops screaming at me like everyone. And we're also going to need to import um, our card. Import card from card. Cool. Um, this might actually work out of the box. Maybe not. The Lord of the Rings. No console errors, but I'm not seeing anything in the UI. Of course I'm not. Let's let's backtrack a bit. So inside of preview, we're getting current selection from props. Props dot current selection dot map. We're mapping over each item. Well, let's just console dot log props and see what it is we're even getting back. Maybe there's nothing to loop through. Uh, let's do the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, current selection does give me an array of items. Hmm. Let's do um, props dot current selection dot map item console dot log item probably should do for each well no stick to map the lord of the rings all right so I'm getting back all of my junk why is it not showing All right, so props.currentSelection.map is an array. We're mapping over each item and we're returning this card. We're passing in the props of poster, which is media.poster. Props.poster. Uh, props.type, props. .type, props .year. Check the property names. Yeah, I'm probably misspelling stuff or not doing nothing right. They're title cased in the response. Oh, wow. I didn't expect that. Good catch. Wow. 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 That's annoying. So we're going to do prop stop. Posters, props dot hypes, props dot year. Will that fix it? The Lord of the Rings. Still didn't fix it. <laughs> Ronald said to check the property. See, that's yelling. That's yelling right there. That's still not working. So let me let me backtrack a bit. Search, no, we don't need to worry about the search form anymore. Don't need to worry about app. Card, props.poster. Oh, wait. Props.poster is equal to media.poster. Yeah, this should work. This should work now. Um, mm, James Bond.
I think I kind of know what's going on here. Let me uh, let me debug. So James Bond returns an array. See why is this breaking my app all of a sudden? James Bond. Oh, we need to wait. Yeah, because this doesn't exist initially. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not understanding why none of this is showing. <laughs> Passing in current selection. not return that let's just return a paragraph tag with media actually no I'm sorry props dot um, title no wait that's stupid that's not gonna work Dustin it's media dot title <laughs> Might have to ask chat GPT what's going on here. All right. For some reason, my card component is not rendering. Any idea why? Props are correctly passed. Wait a minute. Let me try something. Hey, James Bond. Oh, wow. No, that broke everything. Why? Reading poster. Why am I all of a sudden getting this error now? Let's console.log media and see what we're getting back. All right, let's do the very first item of media dot poster. I don't know. I'm definitely getting back everything we need to build out this card component. And I have no clue why I cannot get card to render at all. Let's just say, hello. What does the component tree look like? Let's see, James Bond 
All right, so <laughs> it definitely renders the card component for sure. But what's weird is it's only rendering one card. It's not looping. It's rendering this one card and this one card only. And if I go back, you see that we do get 10 items in here. Um, component tree. Where do I go for that? Components? So media is 10 items, not current selection. Well, media is the iterator for current selection. So props.currentSelection.map and each item in that array is being used by media. No, media, media is the... Um, Media is the array because if I write media at the first index dot poster, I get back just my poster for the first item in the array. All right, hold on. I'm, I'm going to refresh. We'll go to the console and I'm going to delete this and we're just going to console.log media. Okay, so if I go in here and I write James Bond. You see, we get an array of 10 items, all 10 items. So if I access the very first item, I get just that first item. If I do that item dot poster, you see, I get back just the image, which is this James Bond image right here. So I'm definitely accessing the right thing and I am mapping over the right thing. And I was thinking maybe it's an issue of me not having all the data when I need it, but if I do James Bond and then hit James Bond again, or I hit the API, well, messed up here, but if I do James Bond and then hit James Bond again, you know, I still get all this data. It just, it only renders one card for whatever reason. It's not like, it's not rendering more than one. I don't know why. Um, Let me see if it's a UI issue. Let's uh, let's close that off and let's just do try logging current selection before the return. Yeah, I, I thought about this just because maybe I don't have everything in props yet, but um, if I submit it again, it should work and it still doesn't work. Current selection, James Bond. Yeah, so I instantly get an array with all my stuff. So current selection is definitely full. Before the JSX return. I don't think that's gonna render anything yeah, so it's initially empty. Um, James Bond. Yeah, and it comes it comes back with an array, so yeah, it does still work. I have an idea. Instead of rendering card, let's return a p tag that says hello, and this should render at least ten hello p tags. It doesn't. It renders one. Yeah, this is very, very weird. I'm not sure what's going on, to be honest. It's an array in an array, though, isn't it? No, no, it's not. 
Look. All right, so if I type in James Bond. Oh, wait, I done messed up some stuff. Hold on. All right. Console.log um, props.current selection. And I'll I'll put this up here before the return to um, James Bond. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's an array of arrays. And it's technically not throwing errors because it is an array that's being returned. So would I have to do that? And would this literally just fix it right then and there? Just, just a little thing like that? Yep. Looks like it fixed it. Um... Except now there's another error. Can't, yeah, now it can't read map. Mm. Now I need to figure out how to Oh, this is so annoying. I gotcha. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. That makes so much sense. It's just very annoying. All right, so let's go back to our search form. So basically what's going on is we are setting the current selection as an array of arrays, not... <laughs> We're setting the initial array in state to an array of arrays. Have some pizza. Yeah, that would be great. I'd love some pizza right now. That's exactly what's going on. You know what? I was initially going to spread the uh, the original value, but we're, we're only keeping track of one selection at a time. And I never removed the, uh, the array brackets. So it nested an array inside of an array. It never caused issues because technically you can map over an array even if it has one item in it. Oh man, that was annoying to figure out. So this should work now. Uh, I gotta fix something though. Let's see. Now I need to remove this and we should be good to go. So if I type in like the Lord of the Rings, there we go. We get all of our, our movies and games in here now. So sweet. Thanks, uh, thanks for catching that, Rohal. Cause goodness, I was not, I was not looking for that. Pineapple does not belong on pizza. I'm just gonna say that. that's my hot take for the for the stream. You should be thoroughly examined if you think pineapple goes on pizza, but I won't judge. I won't judge. To be fair, I have not tried pineapple on pizza, but I, I also really don't like pineapple. I hate it, so I will not try it. But even if I did like pineapple, I don't think that goes very well together. <laughs> I'm very basic when it comes to pizza though. Like just give me a pepperoni pizza and I'm good. I don't like adding things to it. I'm very basic. I do like it burnt though. Burn it. Burn my pizza, make it crunchy. Yo, what's up, Travis? Popping in with the uh, popcorn emoji because you're here for the, you're here for all the drama. It's been it's been a drama-filled stream so far, but 
yeah, we got we got our app working now for the most part. So now we just need to style this up. Um, this will be pretty fun. There should be no more bugs going forward because we got the hard parts done. We're building a movie searching app as requested by the random project generator. Hello, hello, sorry I'm late. Yeah, you are pretty late. Not gonna lie, you're pretty late. All right, let's figure out how to get this this uh, this thing working. So, our preview with a full... Let's set the max width to like 500. Let's say with full. Um, I don't think that's actually gonna work. No, let's um, let's go to these images inside of our card. And we'll give them a class name. We'll do rounded LG with full. There we go. I think that looks cool. I'm gonna do like XL. We do a border two uh, border. Let's do indigo 700. Well, let's do like a gray. I'm gonna do like gray 300. I think that looks awesome. So let's just like see how well this works. So if we type in like James Bond, cool. We got games that come up. We got some movies that come up. Yeah, Travis, if you're gonna be late, you need to bring stuff like pizza without pineapple on it, but you need to bring stuff. We demand food in here. I've got ramen. <laughs> oh man. I don't know the last time I've had ramen. It's been a while. I would argue the cheap ramen is the best ramen. All right, so you guys wanna talk about pineapple in your pizza? I've got a hot take for ramen and I need everyone to try it. Okay. You don't need a lot, just a little, little bit, but add peanut butter to your ramen, just a little bit. I'm telling you, as weird as it sounds, you're, you're gonna try it and you're gonna be like, wow, how have I ever eaten ramen without it? I'm serious. Give it a try, I think you'll like it. <laughs> don't ask me what's wrong with me. Oh, whatever. You, look. Next stream, I'm gonna make some ramen and I'm gonna put some peanut butter in there and I'm gonna try it for you guys. It's so good. Just a little bit though. A little bit goes a long way. A little bit goes a long way. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get back to this. Um, we do need our title. We have our image. Let's put the title above it. Uh, we'll do props.title, I think is what we used. No, we did not use the title. We need the title. So we'll say title equals media dot title. And now we should get our title. That's weird. We get our title, but it's a underneath the image. Why is the title underneath the image? Does the first one not come with a, uh... oh, oh, I see what's going on here. There we go. Let's give it a class name. We'll do text LG. We'll do a margin bottom, like five. Margin bottom five. Uh, maybe that's too much. Do XL and three. Do font bold. All right, and we need to set up our little logos, right? Our little icons. So for the container for each card, I'm gonna do a class name of relative because we're gonna position that absolutely and we're gonna conditionally render it, right? So we're gonna say if, 
um, props.type is movie, render this icon, et cetera, et cetera. Watch me squirm while I eat it. Nah, it'll be good. You won't be here next stream. Is it because I'm eating the peanut butter with my ramen or you just won't be here? Actually, I used to make ramen and PB toast and dip it in the ramen, so maybe... I'm telling you, dude. It's the weirdest thing. It's very subtle. You can't add a lot of peanut butter, but it's it's really good. Really, really good. Yes, I am using the OMB, OMDB API. Rohald sent it to me. Um, the random project generator told me to build a movie searching app. So we're going to use this API to build it. Whatever, Rohald, you're going to be here. I'll get everyone to spam you in Discord and Slack until you show up. And I'll be here waiting with my big bowl of ramen and a big old jar of peanut butter. Oh, nice. This API is used in the Python tech degree. I didn't know that. I didn't even know this API existed. It's pretty cool. I like it. I really, really like it. And you guys did not tell me that you can't see the chat. You dare me? Dude, I'll do it. I'll have a bowl of ramen here. God, I, I haven't bought ramen in forever. I'm gonna have to go buy some ramen, but I'm gonna go buy some ramen and I will eat it with some peanut butter on stream and show you how amazing it is. What do you mean you can see the chat in the Twitch UI? Send me a DM uh, on Discord, uh, Rawl. Cause I don't know what this looks like on actual Twitch. I don't have it pulled up. But anyways, let's get back to it. Um, So setting up a dynamic icon based on the media type, I think will be pretty easy. Am I muted? Oh no, can you not hear me? That's not good if you can't hear me. Brian can hear me. Travis can hear me. Uh oh, yeah, maybe refresh. I'm not sure what's going on. Oh no, I just looked up in the chat and I saw Brian says that he loves pineapple on pizza. Brian, what's wrong with you? I thought you were cool. I really did, I thought you were cool. This changes things. This changes things. Not not a fan of you anymore, Brian. Sorry. Kara does too. Well, no, 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 mm -mm. no. She's not allowed to the live stream anymore. Not not that she'd ever show up anyway. But <laughs> let's see. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. I like that you have the chat open, Rohold. I didn't know you could do that. Cool. That makes it a lot easier for you guys to see the chat. I could also put the auto delete um, chat option on where it like deletes the chats after so often, but eh. I don't love it, but I don't mind it. Brian and I will get our own pizza at the pizza party. <laughs> we need to have a treehouse pizza party. Oh, the live stream ones for the VODs. Okay. It's not visible in the recordings, YouTube's like that. Yeah, I like that though. I do like that. But yeah, it is good that I have it on screen too for whenever people are rewatching. Makes sense. All right, let's get back to it. The alt, we're gonna change to an image of, and we'll do the, uh, we'll interpolate, whoa. We'll interpolate props.title here. And that did not work very well because I didn't put my back ticks. There we go. Cool. Um, yeah, really the only thing we need to do now is just add this year up here to the title. I'm gonna pop this into a group. So we'll do, um, we'll do a group and we'll change this to a display. Actually, no, you know what? Let's just leave it as is and we'll have it underneath and we'll put the margin bottom on top of the props.year.
There we go. I like that. And then at the bottom of every single card, we're gonna have a huge uh, margin bottom of like 10. Really separate it out. Um, I lied, maybe like a margin of 20. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna move the chat over just a slight bit. We'll put it right on top of the editor so that this could start going down so we could see a little bit better. Troll, troll. <laughs> I was trying to say Travis and I said troll hauled. Not bro hauled or ro hauled, troll hauled. I like that. We're going to make that a thing somehow, troll hauled. But, anyways, Travis, you said yes, please. Is that yes, please to the Treehouse Pizza Party? I would love a Treehouse Pizza Party. That'd be fun. It's like when you used to go to school and you used to have like a day where it was like just a pizza party day. Those are the best days. Or when the teacher would roll out the TV. You get to watch TV. That was back before iPads and iPhones were a thing. <laughs> okay. All right. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up the custom icon based on the media type. And then we're going to be finished with this. And we're just going to dynamically render that. So we're going to say if um, props dot uh, type. I'm sorry. It's lowercase, right? Yeah. Props dot type is equal to. Uh, what were our what were our types? I don't remember. And if they were in lowercase or what? Type. Okay, so it's lowercase and it's just a string. So we'll say if it's movie. Um, return. Um, we'll say return badge with a type. Of movie. I'm probably overcomplicating this. Actually, let's just return like a movie badge. Movie badge. And we'll paste that a few times. So, and if type is equal to game, return game badge. I don't think I'm doing this right. Do I need those? Oh, wait, what am I doing? There we go. And I'm going to pop this down a few more times. We'll do one for game. We'll do one for... Uh... Do you guys remember what the types were? I know we had um, movie, we had game. I think we had series, right? And then I think there was like one more. Count me in as long as there's no pineapple. Same, same, same. Prime videos, okay. What can I return that's gonna give me prime video so I can see how it's spelled? <laughs> or is there some documentation that shows that somewhere? Yeah, let's go check out the docs. Where's the docs? Did I? Oh, man. Somebody send me the docs. I lost the docs. Movie, series, and games. Yeah, let's just keep it simple. Do movie, series, and games. Well, let's. this will be a good way to test a fallback. So if there is more, like the Prime video, we'll have a fallback one. So we'll do... Um, Movies, series, and game. Is it games with an S? Yeah. Cool. So we're gonna import our movie badge from movie. We're going to import our game badge from game badge. And we're going to go make all these in a little bit. 
And we're gonna set up a series badge from series badge. I also need to update these names. So I have a uh, games badge. And we're gonna have a series badge. Uh, games badge.jsx. CE. We're going to do a series badge.jsx. RFCE. And then uh, what was the other one? Why not just do a reusable badge component and pass it a prop for the type? I thought about that, but then I'd basically be doing the same thing as I'm doing now. I'd be creating three different badges, right? Why does it say, can you not first time chat? It's not our first time time chat. Also Dustin and Figma, click the resources icon, search icons, run, and then you have your icon. Wow, it's that simple. Let me screenshot that so I can remember that for later. Now you're creating three components that are doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's just, let's stop yelling at me, bro hold. God, so annoying. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so we'll create a badge.jsx. Let's close all this up. So in our search form, I'm sorry, no, our card, right, we're going to just return badge. With a type that equals props dot type. Um, this kind of makes sense, but it also feels very re like like I'm not doing it right. So if prop dot types equal movie, we're gonna pass that as a prop to the badge. Okay, so inside our badge, let's set up props. And then we're, it, it, it feels really redundant because then we're also checking the same, we're doing the same, does props dot type equal movie? Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Just return badge. Badge, the type of type. And then we check it in the component. Ha, I just read that. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, I don't need the uh, all the conditionals because I'll do that, I'll do that later. So let's remove all these. Let's import badge from badge. Um, Type is equal to um, props dot type. My bad. Yeah, and now in here we'll run our conditionals, right? So we'll return, and we'll say if um, props dot type is equal to movies, Return and we'll probably return an icon. So I'll, I'll set up these icons. Or actually, let's just let's just go ahead and do it. Let's actually just be super simple first. Let's get this working. We'll just return like a string. Right. So this is going to be a div class name, rounded full width of. Uh, let's do like a hundred pixels. Height of 100 pixels. Um, PG red 500 for now. Close that off, and then we'll put in props.type is equal to movies. Equal M, and we can do prop.type equals series. We'll return an S, and movies will be. I mean, and the other one will be games. So we could put like a G. Let's see what I broke. <laughs> I did break stuff. Let's see. Come on.
components movie is missing. Where am I calling that movie thing again? I did jinx it. Um, so it's saying components slash movie. What, do you, what does it mean? What is it saying? Movie app? Oh, is, is it coming? Oh no, I deleted my whole movie app component. Oh no. Oh no. My whole movie app component's gone. Oh, <laughs> I deleted the wrong component. All right, we're gonna have to make this and hopefully I, hopefully I didn't do much in there. <laughs> Luckily you committed to get, right? Let's not talk about that. I think all we're doing in here is returning our search form and we're passing in some stuff. We also set up the state in here too. Damn, all right. <laughs> Oh man, pull it from git. No, yeah, well I didn't commit it. <laughs> and if I recently deleted it, that would have been great, but I did a lot of stuff after, so I can't just like control Z and get everything back. Oh boy. Oh boy, boy, boy. Oh man, all right, you, <laughs> we're gonna have to set up state and everything. And I said there'd be no more bugs. We're gonna we're gonna speed run this. We're gonna do this quick. Const uh, set current selection, right? I think it was called. And then current collection right here. Control Z till it's back, copy and paste it elsewhere. I've done that many, many times. Uh, let's see, let's see how much I can undo. Yeah, nothing else is getting deleted. Was it, do I have to be in this view? Oh, sweet, I could just do this. Would you like to undo create components? Sure. All right, we got movie app back. Oh, no, we don't. I probably just broke everything even more, to be honest. Yeah, we're gonna have to start over. It's fine. I don't think I did any of the logic. Yeah, see all the logic is still in here. All I have to do is just set this back up with the state. It's not gonna take long. Fun stuff, fun stuff. I would do that. All this talk about pizza and pineapple on it. I misspelled that, didn't I? Current selection. Set current selection. That's what we're using, right? Collections or selections? Selections. There we go. All right, so now I just need to pass them into our components and I think we're good. We're not gonna have some styles though, but I'll come back to that. So search form is going to use the set, right? So set current selection equals set current selection and then preview is gonna have the current selection. to import these search form from search form and then import preview from our preview all right this also needs to be
Here we go. We got everything back. Yeah, I messed up uh, spelling U state on line seven. Uh, line six. Oh, so it might be styled pretty badly now, but at least it should still work. Yeah, <laughs> so we kind of got it working now. We have to do all those styles again. Oh boy. <laughs> all right, let's speed run it with full. Wait, no. I think this should be pretty, pretty simple, honestly. Right, and we'll do a height of screen. No. Man, those styles I remember being so annoying too. Style smiles. Yeah, I know. Good thing we're using Tailwind. At least it'll speed it up. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I deleted the wrong component. This was pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, it looked way better. Like this actually went all the way down to the bottom and it looked nice. I don't remember what styles we did to set it all up this way though. <sighs> so if we type in the Lord of the Rings, we do have to set up these things though, right? Let me set these back up. But at least like the app itself works. It's just not styled very well. Delete all the styles and say it's retro. <laughs> it's not a bad idea at this point. Oh, you know right? You know what? I think you're right. I did just use flex and then flex call. Let's see. No, 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 no. Nope. Flex, flex call. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what styles we had set up in here. Um, maybe it was actually in app. So in app, we're setting the grid, we're placing it in the center. Um, that's that. And then the search form and the preview were like this. I don't think, actually, you know what, yeah. There was like another container in here. And I think that was like set to flex. But that wouldn't do anything either. It's not really gonna do anything. It's just a container inside. Div soup. It was div soup. That is for sure. Man, I don't feel like rebuilding this. I mean, the UI looks basically the way we want it. We can do it at the end of the stream. I'm gonna work on getting the uh, the badges to look correct, and then we'll we'll move on from there. So, let's go to badge. Props type equals movies. Then we want to return. M. Why does that not work? My brain is like just messed up from today. Um, I just want to return a letter. How do I how do I make that work? Let's do grid. Place items, center, text, white, font, bold. Oh, it does work. <laughs> I just wasn't looking at one that did. So what is this? Is this movie? Does movie make it work? Yeah, so movie makes it work. 
um, games is not showing up for some reason, and this is definitely a game. So let me console.log uh, props and see what we're getting back and adjust it from there. Type is game, so not games, game. Okay, and then movie, series, okay. So movie, series, game. So that should make it all work. Cool, so we have our little things in here. Now let's render some icons instead. Uh, let's go to font awesome. Actually, let's go to flow byte. Flow byte uh, icons. It's weird because I'm pretty sure one of them said games, plural, when I was looking through the docs. So maybe if it's more than one game, it shows. I don't know. We'll see. Um, let's see what they got for game. Wow, no icons for games. Let's let's instead use Font Awesome. I think Font Awesome is a little bit better, in my opinion. Love this icon. Where's the SVG? I'm going to use the SVG because I don't feel like importing stuff from React. Did that work or is it going to cause an issue? Of course it's going to cause an issue. I think it's this. Yes. And that is under movie. So let me actually just change this to game. Uh, we'll change this to movie and we'll change that to series. Lucid icons next time. It's buyer. Let's see. Lucid icons? Lucide? Oh, these are cool. Game. Okay. Copy S. Ooh, copy JSX. What, what, what do I get for this? What do I get? What do I get? Gamepad. Okay. What do I have to import? I probably should have went to the guide first. Install the library and import it. Installation. npm install Lewisai. And then, oh wait, that's for the web. I'm sorry, I gotta do this one. Let's do npm uninstall Lewis side. npm install Lewis side react. All right, how do I import? Or is it just import Lewis side from Lewis side? Is that how you import it, Rohold? You can get the icon as well, destructure it. Like that. Uh, okay. Ah, I see what you're saying. I keep forgetting I'm using the React gamepad to gotta spell it right. All right, did that work? Components badge. Um, yeah, I probably spelled something wrong. Got an extra I in Lewis side. Oh, it's not Lewis side, it's Lou side. There we go. Let's go James Bond. Cool, okay, yeah, I like that library. That's cool. All right, how do I make my um, icon bigger though? Is there a way to make the icon any bigger?
with magic size prop. Let's see. Sizing, size 64. Nice, it's perfect. Cool, okay, so let's find some other cool icons. We need one for movies and series. So we can do movie. Um, what's a good movie icon? Now we can just go generic, right? So I'll pop that in here. I'll give it a size of 64 and we'll import it up here. What is it called? Clapper board. Cool. And now for series, that'll be an interesting one. Um, let's do, let's find like a stack icon. I think this one looks pretty neat. I'll copy the JSX, paste that and it's file stack. Shows? I don't think they had anything for shows. I want shows. Well, let's see. I don't know. I, I like file stack because it shows more than one thing, and that's kind of what a series is. And then movies, just the clapper board. Um, yeah, let's see what this looks like. So games show up like that. Movies show up like this. And then series show up like this. I think that's pretty cool. Cool. All right, now let's position this. So its parent, which is the card, is positioned relative. Okay, so the badge, we're going to need to position absolute relative to the parent. So we'll do absolute. We can do a top of like five. And we'll do a right of like five. And I don't like that. <laughs> So we'll do a right of zero, or how do I do a negative? I'm gonna do like a negative 10. Oh, that doesn't do anything at all. We need to do pixels. We can do 15, 25. Jesus, about 35, about 50. 50 is cool. And we'll just do a top of zero. I think the five is, oh no, you're right. Maybe 10, five's good. What in the world is James Bond Jr.? Oh, wow. <laughs> it looks like a super old game. I just called myself old though, because this is the year I was born, 1991. <laughs> cool, I think our app is done. I mean, everything that I want to do to it, it's pretty much pretty much done though. Um, I do want to update a couple of things though. So in the preview, we have a background color, right? BG Zinc 800. I want to add that as a border for our badge. So we'll do a border. Um, uh, what was it? Zinc 800. What are my border sizes? I want a thick border. Do border, no. What about border 10 maybe? Yeah, what are the border sizes? Why I can never get border to work right? Two, four, and eight. What if I want something bigger? Yeah, eight's too small. I want I want a bigger border. I'll just have to do like my own size, huh? Like 20 pixels? Yeah, we'll just have to do my own size. We'll do that. What are the other size properties of the uh, icons? Guide, go to sizing, 24, size prop CSS, 64, height and width. Oh, so it's just height and width. How can I set it up myself though? Oh, I gotta give it a special class to do all that. 
I don't feel like doing all that. Or the brackets. Leave me in my brackets alone. It's fine. It's totally okay. All right. Uh, and then I just want to change the color. Yeah, I just want to change the color. Where's my height and width? for our badge, like the badge itself. Let's do like 130 by 130. Cool, really, really like that. Now let's just change the background colors. Um, so we're gonna have to probably do that. I'm say div class name equals um, game. And I'll do this for these two. You'll see what I'm doing in a minute. I'm just gonna give a class name that's gonna wrap each one of these icons up to give them their uh, respective background colors. Dexter, my favorite. Look at all these. Anyone ever, anyone here watch Dexter? It's really, really good. It's one of my favorite series of all times. Of all times. All right, so for game, we're gonna do a background color of something. And we're gonna do the same thing for movie. And we're gonna do the same thing for series. So series. Let's do teal, orange, and maybe game could be like green or something. Let's just see if it works. Oh no, it works, but it reminded me that I can't be doing it through this. We're gonna conditionally render the class name on the uh, thing up here. This should be simple, it should not take long. Um, we can say if props dot type is equal to movie uh, we'll say movie else props dot type is equal to game game else props.type is equal to series series Travis are you trolling never watched Dexter Never watch Dexter. You should go watch Dexter. If you like crime stuff, it's pretty good. It's really, really good. All right, I gotta figure out what I did wrong. I did something wrong. All right, so if props is equal to movie, this needs to be in a string. And you wanna return movie. If it's a game, you wanna return game. If it's series, you wanna return a string series. Oh, it broke it all. It broke everything. Uh, what broke? What did I do wrong? Is it because I'm interpolating? It is because I'm interpolating. This needs to be inside of um, brackets. And it's still giving me issues. I think it's syntax always confuses me when it comes to um, doing any sort of like interpolation.
Hmm. Yeah, I never know where to end the stupid uh, close bracket. Let me, um, let me run this through. What's wrong with my syntax for class names? I'm getting an error with how I'm interpolating my class names. What's wrong? Love some good keyboard ASMR. Bro Hall, did you peep the um, video from yesterday? I did, I did. Um, I did some uh, ASMR. Oh wow, this seems like a much easier way to do it. Let's just do that. All right, so let's see, we'll do Dexter and it worked, but it kind of messed everything up. I need to add back in, it looks like um, absolute. Oh no, this would be for the, uh, Hmm, now it done messed up my, um... Yeah, I'm still in the Logitech MX. I like this one more than most of the other ones because the keyboard layout is really, really like familiar. It kind of mimics the Mac keyboard really well. So whenever I do like work on my laptop, it's not like I gotta like re-remember um, like all the muscle memory stuff. Do you still use a split keyboard? Yeah, dude, the MX um, is such a good line. Like even the, uh, the mouse is really, really awesome. I love the mouse so much. I've had this mouse die on me before and I just instantly reordered it without doing any more research on other mouses or mice, I should say. Digma Defi. I probably butchered that. I don't know. I've seen so many people lately using those split keyboards and it's got me it's got me wanting to try it, but I feel like if I tried it and I liked it, there's no going back. And I really like being able to use my MacBook here and there, especially when I travel. All right, why is this not working anymore? So, uh, okay, we lost a lot of, we lost some stuff, that's why. So let's just copy all of that. Let's bring it all back. And we're just gonna paste it right back in. And that should fix it. There we go. Cool, now let's just update the colors for the badges and I think we're good. Lord, actually let's type in Harry Paula. Cool, so what, got, what color do you think we should use for the movies? What colors do you think we should use for the series? And what color do you think we should use for the games? 
Let's find one that's got a little bit of both. Let's do Lord of the Rings. Okay, cool. So Lord of the Rings has games. Lord of the Rings has movies. Lord of the Rings has series. Commit, commit, commit. Yeah, let's commit now before I mess anything up. Finished app, no buggies yet. Um, committing before I break things again. <laughs> All right, it's committed. We're, we sure be, we should be good. <laughs> Very smart. She probably just saved me so much time. All right, what color should we use? You guys help me out. What color should we use for the movies icon? And what color should we use for the series icon? And what color should we use for the game icon? Game icon should definitely not be green. Pantone 448C, a shade of green brown is considered the ugliest color in the world. <laughs> I'm not using that then. Everything should be tomato. Let's do tomato for the games. There we go. Representing old gilly gilly. Is this the hex for it? Ugh, it looks ugly. What color is that? It's not that bad. It's not a bad color. It's like a mocha. It's like a mocha for the movies let's um <laughs> let's do a uh let's do like a nice bright green for the movies oh that's too green we need better contrast with the icon that looks good and then for the series let's do like a blue since brian's favorite color is blue movie the series are for you brian all right cool so i think we're done here other than this ugly ui that i messed up because i deleted a whole component you know what maybe we could see if we could just figure that out real quick i mean i did it earlier i'm gonna fix it again and then we'll go over the app i'll commit it we'll push it and then i think stream will be over for the day i mean we've been streaming for almost four hours now okay um, if we go to the movie app, let's see what's going on in here. Um, with, oh wait, with full? Actually, no. I think this needs to be height. This be height. Screen? Oh, that's not it. That's not it. With full too? That's not it either. Hmm. H full, with full, nope. Keep it on with full though, for sure. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, and I think we could do like justify between. I have to do the height set for screen though. There we go. Um, yeah, there we go. That's it. And if I type in something like Dexter, we get all of our stoofs. Cool. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, we didn't even have to use Flex Grow. Admittedly, Flex Grow confuses me. I don't use it. <laughs> I use it as a last resort. All right, guys, so we finished our app. It looks pretty cool. Type in anything right here. Let's type in Fortnite. Oh, cool, it broke the app. So yeah, that's something we should handle. If we don't get anything back, how do we handle ex uh, errors? Super simple. We'll do that real fast and then we'll finish up the app build for the day. So we should go to where our, um, our API call is and we should just wrap it in a try catch. So, 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 we'll try this and we'll catch any errors 
and console dot error our error. It's that simple. So if I type in Fortnite, it still breaks the app. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. Oh, it cannot read properties of map. I mean, um, cannot read properties of undefined when mapping. And why is that? Because we are only setting this when this is good. Or did I break something somewhere else and this isn't, so if I type in James Bond, will it still break? No, it doesn't still break. Maybe just make it no results found component to render if nothing is returned. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Which means we'll have to wrap. Um, We'd have to wrap everything though if we did that, right? Yeah, we'd have to wrap almost the whole app. Well, no, no, because we could either return this or return. Yeah, that's 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 fine. That's fine. Can I can I pop this? Um, hold on backspace out of all that stuff and let's take a look at what this looked like before I touched it so try this catch error um, return why am I drawing a blank I don't know how to do this I don't know how to set it up I should have done this first because doing it after the fact is so confusing give me some ideas what do you guys think? How should we handle the error? logging the data on the air just breaks the app though because it, it won't let me uh, map through so this doesn't work I can't actually like log the error good try but I don't think it's gonna work type in Fortnite yeah it just it just completely um, breaks it because it wants to it wants to map over something that doesn't exist Mm. 
I don't get how I would run the error before line 12, though. So there's no error being thrown by the API, so try catch isn't working here. I guess that makes sense. If you try logging the data after the after the request, you can see ah, uh, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, let's see what we're getting back. So if I type in Fortnite, I get a status 200, but um, in the data, I just get, it says, let me make this a little bigger. It says no movies found. It's still a status of 200 though. So should I just check if data, if data.error exists? Gotcha. Okay, so let's do, are we inside JSX? Yeah, data.error. Um, if I run a return statement here, what it's, it's, mm, let me just console.error. There was an error with the request. Let's, uh, let's do this. Else, turn that. All right, so James Bond returns all of our James Bond stuff. Awesome. Let's actually remove the console. Wait, where am I logging all this stuff at? Oh, from badge. Let's go to badge and remove that. All right, so we'll do James Bond. We get back all our James Bond stuff. If I want to change this to Fortnite, ah, it still wants to map over. And I think that's because I'm using data.error wrong, probably. What was it, actually? And close all this out close go back to source go back to components go back to sorry search form yeah let me console.log data again and see what it actually was that we were getting back oh wait wrong spot put it after Is it an uppercase error? Data.error, sure is. All right, so uh, Fortnite, oh, dang, still, still the same thing. Let me make sure it's the right uh, thing. Console.log data.error. So data.error is undefined. Wait, <laughs> it's undefined because it actually returned Fortnite for once. What? Why was it not returning Fortnite before? <laughs> Why is there all of a sudden data for Fortnite? Was the API down maybe? No, because I was, I was returning uh, Dexter. That's so weird. 
That's so weird. Maybe... Oh, was I spelling it wrong? What was I... Oh, I wasn't doing the T. I was doing Fortnite. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Console. Yeah, it's still returning undefined. So let me return data and just see what it's actually called because it's not data.error. Go figure. <laughs> uh, it's data.response. No. It is data.error. Why is it not working? Data data.error. Yeah, you're right. Data is the actual thing we're getting back. So it's data data.error. There we go. Fortnite should work now. Yeah, no movies found. Cool. So that's what we needed. So we'll write data.data.error right here. Remove the console.log. And now we should not break the app if sweet it did not break the app but we should have something in the console so what I'll just do here is I will just alert there was an error with the request or I'll just return the actual error I'll do data dot data dot error in the alert so the app should be finished now let's have some a Alert is the quick and easy solution. I don't want to make a modal or anything. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And I don't want to re restructure the whole app to return a certain component based off of this. So stop yelling at me, bro. Hauled. All right. So if we, we type in Dexter, cool. We get all of our Dexter movies and games. There's a game. Dexter, the game. That's cool. Um, and if I go in here and I type in Fortnite, no movies were found. Awesome. All right, you know what? He wants he wants to see it, so we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. All right, let's go into our movie app. Let's set up some state. We'll const. Uh, what do you want to call it? We'll, we'll do what he says. Uh, has error. Ah. Set has error. Equals use state initially set to false. Um, import error screen from. And we'll set up something. We'll call it error screen. And what we'll do is uh, let's conditionally render. So if has error, um, return uh, error screen, else return. Do I need a write return? Yeah, I think I do need a write return. And then we'll just paste in um, all of this. And it's not liking that. So I need to figure out what I did wrong has error return oh there we go oh it doesn't like that either we'll figure it out who has error and not found. <laughs> I don't want to do that. All right, what's wrong with my syntax here? It's been a long day. Oh, return inside a return, maybe. I don't know. Start fresh. <laughs> Online nine has error and not found. I'm going to do my error screen. Oh, yeah, I don't need to conditionally render. 
right? This doesn't even make sense. Start over. So let's go to the search form. If um, we're, we're going to set set, uh, what would we call it? Set has error, set has error to true. Uh, we're going to need to pass that in, right? So that'll be props dot set has error. And in here, that is inside of our search form, right? Yeah, search form. So we're going to also pass in um, set has error as set as error. There we go. And if set has error is true, Nothing's happening. It's because I'm still rendering this, I think, right? I haven't really done much conditional rendering UI. So. Let's say um, has error. Then we want to return the um, error screen. Else, return that. What is up with my syntax? Am I not ternarying right? And why is this not even highlighting? What am I doing wrong, Rohald? I'm gonna start this out. What is wrong with my syntax? Something's like super wrong. I'm doing something super wrong. Why is my ternary stuff not working? I'm gonna type in ternary syntax and go take a look at this. Do I need to write return in front? My ternary is just not working, but I think it has something to do with, none of this is, I don't know. Dude, my, all right, I'm gonna rewrite my ternary. Let me know if what's wrong with it. I don't know, it seems right. So I'm doing has error, right? And if it's true, then we wanna return our error screen component. Else, I wanna return all of this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this but it's saying something's wrong up here. I don't understand. I mean, do I have to like close this or something or like write return in front of it? <sighs> yeah, I don't know what's going on with this. It's probably something simple. It's been a long day and I'm probably really messing up some simple syntax. It needs to be in a single parent element though. Even the JSX, like the return?
Well, that's news to me. Wow. Well, that's good. It's good to know that. I did not know I had to actually write that inside of a fragment or at least a single component, but it makes sense because you can only return one thing. Uh, all right, so we'll type in Dexter. That works. Go back and type in Fortnite. Cool, and now we get our error screen component. So let's just set that up real fast. And then I swear I'm done. I'm finished. Class name. I'm gonna do with full max, max width. 500 pixels. Why does that not look right? There we go. We'll do BG white, uh, rounded LG, padding five. And we'll do text sync 900. Text center font bold. There was an error with your uh, request. Super simple. But you haven't implemented the watch now streaming option yet. What do you mean watch now? <laughs> uh, I'm not adding more features. Whew. To be continued. <laughs> Let's see. Should we, should we, let's do text like 500. Yeah, it looks better. Um, yeah, I was gonna make this a modal where you can click out, but this is fine. We'll just reload. It's not. It's not crazy. It's not a crazy project. All right. Um, let's see. What do we want to search? Let's do Harry Potter. Cool. 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 Got some Harry Potter stuff. Let me type in Lord of the Rings. Got all of that. Do Star Wars. That's cool. Do they have the new Star Wars game in here? They don't. How come they don't have the new Star Wars game? Oh well. Cool, all right, we're finished. I'm gonna submit this. Um, added error handling. Yeah, push. Now, I'm gonna close this off, CD, go back into um, code random project generator RTW. And we're gonna npm run dev, open this up. Now I'm gonna go to GitHub. Let's find our new repo. Movie search app. Copy the repo link. And yeah, because we took this digital clock I think it's gonna mess up when I go to like submit the movie search, but we'll see. Complete it. A round of applause for conquering that project. Such a her Herculean task. I don't like that. Wait, was it? Yeah, it was in the right one. Let's see what else. Project complete. I have my doubts, but you proved me wrong. Yeah, I have my doubts too. Complete. Oh no, it didn't mess up the UI at all. So that's cool. Sweet, we got our second project of the project, random project generator finished. Nice, that was a lot more of a headache than I thought, but I learned a lot. I did learn a lot. Let's go ahead and actually abandon the uh, digital clock. I don't wanna do that. I don't think that's a fun project at all. And it, and it would take like two seconds. Maybe I'll make a quick ASMR video for the digital clock. I'll come back to it maybe. 
<laughs> I think we all learned that there's a James Bond Jr. I don't think I didn't know that for sure. That's funny. That's funny. All right, let's go to stream. All right, who's still here? Who Who's in here watching? If you're in here, type something in the chat. Let me know you're here. Let me know who's watching me fail miserably at creating a movie search app. <laughs> Bro Hall, Soli, Travis lies. I mean, no, no. I mean, we technically, we built it. We built the thing. It's there. Can you not? What kind of emoji is that? That's creepy. It looks like the Joker, kind of. That was cool. That was cool. Are we rating out? What is rating out? You're gonna have to teach me some of these Twitch things. I kind of have an idea what raids are, but I'm not like 100% sure. Now that is a Twitch emoji I might actually start using. <laughs> is it a Joker? It looks like the Joker. This was a fun stream. Honestly, whenever the, the generator said make a movie search app, I had my doubts, but that was pretty neat. Good job, Rohal, with the uh, API. That was fun. Now I have an app that I can search any movie, game, or series that I want. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. So we bring our party to another Twitch channel to bring awareness to our Twitch channel so we can get more followers. I'm down for that. I don't know any other streamers to be honest, though, do you, do you have any in mind? I could see if Coding Garden's on, but that's the only other Twitch channel I really know. Twitch.tv slash the Coding Garden. No, I spelled that wrong. Like I spell everything wrong. Oh, it's just Coding Garden. Nah, he's offline. We search. What should we search? Look, I'll pull my screen back up. Where should we, where should we go? I did see that he's working with Syntax now, dude. That The Syntax podcast is gonna be awesome. Anything that they put out is gonna be super cool with um, CJ there, Coding Garden. I was so hyped to find out that last week. That's that's a really good fit. I think that's a really good fit. I hope he still makes his own content though, like on his channel, because I really enjoyed watching his channel. 